some of the supplies that you need to put together a digital pattern. Um, what I have before you are just a few things. Um, some of them are optional and some of them you kind of got to have. So the first thing we have is scotch tape. This is clear scotch tape. Any kind of um, tape, as long as it is clear and it'll stick, is what you need. You'll also need a pair of scissors, and I recommend having some old scissors that are sharp enough to cut paper. So you don't want your good fabric scissors, right? Now, if these next two are optional, and what this is is a rotary cutter. It's one of my um, older ones that has a blade in it that I use exclusively for things like paper or anything that's not fabric. And I also have a ruler, a daylight wafer to light box. And this thing is amazing. It is really great for doing applique and putting together these types of pattern pieces. And as you see, it has a bright LED light and this one um, is super. On top of my uh, light box, I have a clear kind of like um, self-healing mat, if you will. It's clear, so I can't cut directly on the light box itself. You have to have a mat. And I selected the one um, that does not have any grid lines. There are some available that happen to have the grid lines. So I can use a rotary cutter on this. So most importantly, you are going to need um, a pattern, a layout. And as you can see, there are 40 different pieces to this particular project. And this layout um, shows you what it's going to look like. So on my first row, I know by looking at this that I'm going to put my um, piece of paper that's labeled number one through 10 on this first row and then my second row picks up with number 11 over to 20 so that's really helpful so up here in the upper left hand corner it actually tells me that um, this piece is belongs in row 2 column 1 and I know that also by looking at my um, layout it also has the number number 11 so I know that's piece number 11 now what I want you to take a look at are these things right here they are not part of the pattern itself, but they are registration marks so that I line the pattern up properly. So this is a very simple process and the light box makes it even easier. Now, one of the things that I recommend is that you trim one of the sides and there is no right or wrong way to do this. So for example, I know that these two registration marks have to match up with these two. And that means that we're gonna lay this over top and look really closely at the registration marks underneath so that they're perf in alignment very perfectly. I personally find it really easy for me to go ahead and trim one of these sides. So I'm gonna use my scissors. And being right-handed, I have to turn that over and I'm going to um, cut right along this line and remove that slice. Now, what I've also found um, it makes it saves me a little bit of time is that um, if I select, like say the even number pieces, that I'm going to trim both sides of those pieces, for example, um, it saves me a little bit of time in the assembly process. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kinda of set sheet number 11 aside and I'm gonna get out my rotary cutter. Remember that I have this clear um, mat, a rotary cutter mat underneath of this that's also available through daylight so that I can cut right on the light box itself. So I'm gonna line up my ruler along that red line, the cut line, and I'm just gonna use my rotary cutter and trim that off. I really didn't do a great job doing that. I got, I wasn't on the line so well, but it'll be okay. Um, and just remember that these rotary cutters are extremely sharp. So when you use one of these, a good rule of thumb, is, thumb, no, no pun intended, but a good um, practice is to kind of keep your hand off to the one side and maybe even put your small finger off of the uh, ruler itself. The reason being is you don't want your fingers to get in the way because these rotary cutters are sharp. Now I'm going to grab my tape 
I want to make sure that these are perfectly lined up. So I'm going to take my tape and carefully place it on top. Well, how many pieces of tape you put on here is totally up to you. What I tend to do is to put one in the center and I continue making sure that the registration marks are lined up. I take and put another one down towards the other end and uh, the other end. So now I have all my tape on there. So what I'll do is line up my next piece. So let me find sheet number 13. And remember, I trimmed both sides of sheet 12. So all I have to do is line up those registration marks. Sometimes I take a look at um, these lines to see that they might match. But most importantly, it's these lines, which are your pattern lines. They really have to line up. Um, otherwise, your, your pattern pieces are going to be way off. So here we have pattern piece number 13. We have the edge of that. But when I go to work with pattern piece number 14, this is the one that I'm going to take a minute to go ahead and trim both sides so that I can work a little faster. I have an outlet up in the ceiling so that I can plug in my day bo daylight box, light box, and it is underneath um, of my pattern, like in the center. So that's where I decided to start. So I went ahead and put a piece of tape in here to get started because it likes to shift a little bit. So as you can see, I lined up my registration marks. This time I decided not to trim the edge of the paper. So I'll add a few more pieces of tape to this and get this nice and situated. But the, the uh, you know, you really have to have plenty of space. I would, you know, clear off the kitchen island or something like that, work on the floor for sure. You could do that. And then I'm just going to move to the next set of registration marks and slide my pattern down on top of my daylight box. So these digital patterns are just like a really great way for instant gratification so that you can start working on something quickly. So I just want to make sure everything's lined up. And So let's take a look at what I have accomplished so far. I have gone ahead and uh, finished the other half of the pattern. So as you can see, I work row by row. I, I assembled the first row of pattern pieces together, um, one through 10, and then you saw me do row uh, pieces 11 through 20, and I taped those together. So now I'm gonna grab the other half of my pattern piece. I have the first two rows over here and the bottom two rows here, and those rows are already taped together. Now what I'm going to do is tape the, the top two rows to the bottom two rows and make one big pattern. I have my light board under here so that I can see what I'm doing. And again, just like before, I'm gonna work from the center and go to one side, come back to the center and go to the other side. So let's finish assembling this. My pattern's all assembled now and I am ready to start cutting it out. So one of the things that I do is I look to see where the seams are, where, and meaning where the pieces of paper join and identify any areas that I think should be um, have more tape on them. So like over in this area, I did a pretty good job of lining it up and getting tape on the important parts. 
what I'm going to do is I have my scissors um, for that I use for paper and now I'm going to start cutting into this and cut out my pattern piece. Now what I generally do is cut out the whole pattern um, at first and then I'll cut it down. here and again I can take a look around to make sure there's no pieces that are kind of hanging loose I just like them to be reinforced together just makes it a lot easier for the next step 